the great astronomer of antiquity, Claudius Ptolemaeus, Ptolemy, in the second century, knew that the earth was a sphere, knew that its size was a point compared to the distance of the stars, and taught that it, quote, lay right in the middle of the heavens, close quote. Aristotle, Plato, St. Augustine, St. Thomas Aquinas, and almost all the great philosophers and scientists of all cultures over the 3,000 years ending in the 17th century bought into this delusion. Some busied themselves figuring out how the sun, the moon, the stars, and the planets could be cunningly attached to perfectly transparent crystalline spheres, the big spheres, of course, centered on the earth, that would explain the complex motions of the celestial bodies so meticulously chronicled by generations of astronomers. And they succeeded. With later modifications, the geocentric hypothesis adequately accounted for the facts of planetary motion, as known in the 2nd century and in the 16th. From there, it was only a slight extrapolation to an even more grandiose claim, that the perfection of the world would be incomplete without humans, as Plato asserted in the Timaeus. Man is all, the poet and cleric John Donne wrote in 1625. He is not a piece of the world, but the world itself, and next to the glory of God, the reason why there is a world, said John Donne. And yet, never mind how many kings, popes, philosophers, scientists, and poets insisted on the contrary, the earth through those millennia stubbornly persisted in orbiting the sun. You might imagine an uncharitable extraterrestrial observer looking down on our species over all that time, with us excitedly chattering, the universe created for us, we're at the center, everything pays homage to us, and concluding that our pretensions are amusing our aspirations pathetic, that this must be the planet of the idiots.